Good morning, folks, and welcome to worship on the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time as we travel through this season of learning about what it means to be disciples, what it means to be the church, filled with the spirit and sent in love for the world. As always, during this service of the word, I invite you to remain on mute. It helps us with sound uh, in the final recordings. Uh, but to unmute yourselves uh, at the times that are listed as being unmuted. But nonetheless, wherever you are, I invite you to sing the songs. We are grateful for Ralph Wellington, who is here to lead us in music, and in the prayers and in the psalm, wherever the words are in bold. We trust that God who hears all things hears us too, even when we cannot always hear one another. There will be communion on the lawn at 1115, for those who would like to join me here, please remember to wear your masks. As we begin our worship, we call ourselves, center ourselves, prepare ourselves for worship with the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of man and the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. 
Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We join together in our gathering hymn. Hymn number 979 from All Creation Sings, Making Their Way. your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Bali Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God. 
which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It was told King David, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen, linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts, and distributed food among the people. The whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and those who dwell therein for the lord has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers who may ascend the mountain of the lord and who may stand in god's holy place those of innocent hands and purity of heart who do not swear on God's being, nor do they pledge by what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly, the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, 
according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hopes on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards the redemption of as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know the hope to which God has called us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of all that Jesus was doing, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in Jesus. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that John was a righteous and holy man, and Herod protected John. When, John, or when Herod heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a, pla on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, let's be honest. This is not anybody's favorite gospel of the year. And it comes, thankfully, only once every three years. Mark is the only one that tells us of John's beheading. Uh, and so thankfully, we only get this once every three years. And even at that, believe me, I tried to figure out if we could transfer a feast day to this week, because this is no one's favorite gospel. If for no other reason, 
Jesus doesn't actually show up anywhere in this gospel. And while we're used to that in the season of Advent, we're not so used to it in this season of the church. In this season of the church, we are used to hearing the parables, the healings, the teachings, examples, and uh, sort of teachings of Jesus of how to be in the world sharing the love and life of God. And then we get this sort of random week where we actually get a flashback, which we get very few of in the Bible. But we get this flashback of John as people are murmuring about the work that Jesus is doing. And he's convinced that the prophet that he had killed has come back from the dead. And we get a whole lengthy, fairly famous uh, story of what that looks like. What do we do with this? What do we do with a text that doesn't seem to really apply to us? What do we do with a text where Jesus doesn't show up, his disciples don't show up, there's not really a teaching for us, it's just a, what seems like a filler story in the already short Gospel of Mark? Well, the first thing we do is we read it again and again, and sometimes again and again and again, to see ways that this might be speaking to us. And the beauty of worship and of our lectionary is that we read it not alone, but with several other readings from scripture and with the themes and prayers of the day to see what God might still be saying to us, even if through a filler flashback. And what I cannot help but draw connections to is that we get two uh, very different, very different stories of dancing in scripture. And I think we don't always focus as much as we could on the physical actions that show up in scripture. As we heard in our prelude, uh, we know that Miriam takes a tambourine in her hand and leads the women of Israel in song and dance on the safe side of the sea. Knowing full well that God would work wonders, she took time in her fleeing refugee uh, sort of exile for her life to pack an instrument and knew what dance she would dance. So too we hear of David twice Twice in this reading from Samuel, David dancing before the Lord, dancing before the Ark of the Covenant, which is itself the sign among the people of God's presence in our midst. And David dances with abandon and, as it says twice, danced with all his might before the Lord. And then we get the slightly less positive version of Herodias, the daughter of Herodias who is the wife of Herod and the daughter-in-law of Herod and the daughter of a Herod. The dynasty is called the Herodians, by the way, if you hadn't guessed. But Herodias dances for much more sinister reasons and ends up with the head of John the Baptist on a platter because of her dancing. Okay. Maybe Herodias isn't the person we're supposed to latch on to in the gospel, even though we have all these stories of dancing. But maybe, maybe there's something here as we think about dancing and what dancing involves, and whether you like it or not, and I'll admit I'm not necessarily one to cut a rug. Nonetheless, the idea of dancing is that you are so consumed with the music, the atmosphere, the time, the season, that your whole body gets involved. And whether or not you are able to stand and dance on your own or simply to tap your foot or snap your fingers, that you are so moved in the moment that your whole body wants to participate. Now that sounds a little bit more like John rather than Herodias. The idea that John points the way to Jesus and does so with his whole self, now in his case with martyrdom, and I am by no means advocating martyrdom, but nonetheless we know that John's entire existence, pointing the way to Jesus, has been with his whole body. You can't deny it when the man did nothing but eat milk 
and honey in the wilderness wearing camel's hair, which is not known for its comfort. And one wonders if we are not also being reminded this week of giving our whole selves to point the way to Jesus. David dances before the ark as it is on its way. He is sort of leading the way with dancing until the ark takes a home among the people in the holy city. So too, John gives his whole self to pointing the way to Jesus. It's not me that you're looking for. It is that one over there, the Lamb of God, as John quotes him as saying. And I wonder if we allow ourselves to give our full selves, our full-bodied participation to God's work of love and life in the world. Because, my friends, we have amazing news to tell the world. Paul says, in Christ, you also have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of Christ, who accomplishes all things. You are an inheritor with Christ of the best and the brightest and the most that there is for God to offer. So too is this creation that God so loves, that God gives of God's very self for the world. And that, I think, is something that should at least stir us to toe-tapping or perhaps bobbing our heads or whistling along. It should uh, instill in us a full body participation to what this means, because what it means for you and for me is that none of this matters, that, that uh, everything that we have belongs to God who clutches it so dearly in Christ and never lets it go, that it is almost this freeing of ourselves to worry about what's here and rather to proclaim that there is nothing to worry about, rather proclaim that there is a reason to dance and sing, rather proclaim that there is a reason for us to rejoice with our full selves as part of God's whole creation. That in many ways, the whole being of creation might rejoice in the salvation and wonder and glory of God that is ours. I didn't say it was easy. And I'll admit it's probably not always fun, this full body participation. Because too often what we are reminded of is the limitations of our bodies. Too often we are reminded that the color of our skin or who we love or our gender put limitations on who we can be and the fullness of our potential. Too often we are bogged down in whether our intellect or our income is enough for society to deign that we are worthy enough. Too often we look askance, we look sideways. We're more like Michal in the story who uh, despises David for his dancing and rejoicing. Too often that is what we receive or worse, what we uh, cast upon others in their rejoicing rather than to be a reason in the world for all of creation to sing and dance, particularly when called before the Lord our God. I wonder sometimes how much we give our whole selves to the work of God in the world, knowing full well the great glory, the blessing, the freedom, the freeing, and frankly, the rhythm that comes from the good news of God in Christ for us. I think about that often. Particularly, I think, as Lutherans who are not known for our singing and dancing in the aisles during worship. And one wonders if we don't sing and dance there, whether or not we are giving our whole selves elsewhere. So this week, this season, 
I hope that you hear the rhythm of God's good news freeing you to share with others the very dance of God's life in the world. Because God does breathe life into you. And the Spirit continues to sing her song all around you. Let us with David give ourselves over to the song and the dance, that our whole bodies might be part of sharing the good news of God in Christ for a world that needs just that dance. For the dance and the song of God. And for our invitation to join in. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join together in a hymn that I cannot help but think at least will get your toe tapping with the rhythm that comes from this. Uh, but we join together in hymn number 796 in PLW, How Firm a Foundation. <laughs> together confess the faith in which we are baptized. I believe in God, 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 God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in, I believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, God's only Son, God, God, our Lord, was conceived of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the cross of the Pilate, was crucified and died, saved. Descended to the dead. On the third day, he raised the dead. He did at the right hand of the Father. The Father, 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 the Let us come before the triune God in prayer, responding to each petition with the words, hear us and help us.
O God, bless the church throughout the world. Uphold bishops, pastors, deacons, chaplains, and leaders of monastic communities. Protect from danger and contagion everyone who attends church camps throughout the summer and provide meaningful worship for campers. That we might nurture one another in baptismal life. O oh God, hear us hear and us help and us. us. Bless the earth, moderate the intense heat, give shade and breezes to all, and send necessary rain to nourish the crops. Preserve farm laborers as they work each day under the sun. That your creation will survive and thrive, O oh God, hear us and, and help us. Bless the leaders of nations, crush the might of tyrants, train those in power to care for all the oppressed in their land, lead wealthier countries to share the COVID vaccine with the poorer nations. Protect whistleblowers and journalists and form us into persons without prejudice against others. That the nations might know peace and justice, O oh God, hear us and help us. Bless all who live without power or status. Free the poor, especially youths, from every form of enslavement. Grant security and self-determination to indigenous peoples around the globe, that all people might live in dignity. O oh God, hear us and help us. Bless all who are sick or suffering. Comfort the survivors of disaster or gun violence. Protect us from the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Visit all who are imprisoned and accompany all persons who are facing capital punishment. Receive our prayers for Roy, Betty, Dick, Kay, Adam, and those whose names and needs we cry out now. That all people might experience well being, O oh God. Hear, Hear us, us and, and help us. us. We bless you for all who have died in the faith, especially for Benedict of Nursia and for those we remember before you here, especially Anthony. At the end, fulfill your promise to us of life together in your presence, that we might be gathered up with all the saints in Christ. Hear us and help, help us. Receive these prayers, merciful God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. My siblings, the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share signs and greetings of peace with one another. Peace be with you all. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Pastor, you're still muted. Thanks, Graham. As we continue our worship, we do give thanks for the many ways that we are called to give of our whole selves, our pocketbooks included, to the work of God in the world. I invite you to prayerfully consider the ways that you can financially support our ongoing ministry here at Christ Ascension, which you may do with a physical check to the church office or electronically at christascension.org slash donate. As we give thanks, we sing together hymn number 771, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens.
Let us give thanks. Holy God, our maker, our healer, our teacher, your magnificent creation springs forth from your word. All that has life and breath praises your name. For your word that sustains the earth, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. You sent us Jesus, your word, to renew the world. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, preached your mercy, and called us to faith. For your word in our Lord Christ, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Nourish us with the spirit of your word, that we may grow in grace, bearing the fruits of redemption, and sharing your strength and beauty with all the world. For your word in our lives, we entreat you, O God. We entreat you, O God. Accept our thanksgiving and receive our prayer for the sake of your living word, Jesus our Savior. Amen. I invite you to unmute yourselves, as together we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit and pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven. heaven. Um, heaven. Um, hallowed be your name. Your, name. your kingdom come, come. Your will be done on, 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 on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of God and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we continue uh, our worship and our life together here at Christ Ascension, some announcements for you. The first is, as always, worship next week will be outdoors at 9.30 on the lawn. So I hope to see you there. Don't forget your masks. Bible study does meet this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom as we continue our way through the book of Acts. That link will be in the e-news. If you have not yet had an opportunity to fill out the faith formation survey that was in the e-news, please do take an opportunity to do that. It's multiple choice and really should take you a minute. It's just some information as we look to plan what faith formation, Christian education, adult forum, Bible study, etc., what that looks like uh, come the fall. If you have anyone to add to the prayer list, I've already gotten some emails, but if you uh, have anyone to add to the prayer list, please email me or the church office. You can just uh, press reply, uh, not reply all, but just reply to the uh, e-news that comes out on Mondays and that will come straight into my inbox uh, and we can get those folks on the email. Please remember, on, on the list, please uh, remember to give me uh, the relationship to you and what we're praying for. And as always, we ask that you receive permission before we post people's names in such a public fashion. Uh, there are vegetables to be gathered in the garden, and I'm sure if you're on your way here, you will uh, see them. But Bex, do you want to give us a quick rundown? Squash, squash, more squash, um, some lettuce. Um, I think there's some hot peppers. And um, the tomatoes are now finally coming in. So not, some, not ready. Not ready yet, but will be soon. So please do take advantage of the garden we have growing just behind the sanctuary. If you have any announcements that you would like uh, to go out to the wider community, please be sure that you email me by Sunday afternoon so I'm sure that they can get in to Monday morning's e-news. Finally, there will be Zoom coffee hour immediately following worship. Uh, a reminder that uh, we do have communion at 1115 here on the lawn. Uh, so plan and budget your time in Zoom coffee hour uh, accordingly. Let us bless one another in our time apart. May the Lord watch between me and you while we are absent one from another. And the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us will be upon you now and forever. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn, hymn number 1090 in all creation sings, Heaven Opened to Isaiah.
wherever we are, Christ's ascension is gathered by God in faith, proclaiming Christ's hope, sent by the Spirit to love. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.